What is up, Rad Potential? YouTube, welcome to another Rad informational video on first gen RX7s because we live, eat, and breathe first gen RX7s around here. Distracted me earlier. There's these little bugs, man. I'm telling you, I don't know. They've been hanging around. There are these little green guys. See them right there? Right there. Anyways, they fly into lights. So I had my lights on in here. Come in here earlier and it was swarming. Murder hornets, i.e. these little things were everywhere. Okay, anyways, the point of the video. How to put a manual transmission in your automatic RX-7. And I'll say this pretty much just applies for just about all the rotary cars. They're pretty much the exact same. Um, but the title, first gen. Here we go. First things first. You have to remove the automatic transmission. When you do that, you're going to encounter on the back of the rotary engine is going to be a flex plate and a torque converter, and it might be hard for you to remove. I think they have a nice inspection plate um, on the bottom of those bell housings. If not, you can probably get through it, get to the bell housing bolts through the starter hole. What you're going to find when you get to the inside of said flex plate and stuff, so on the back of your engine is going to be one of these fancy counterweights right here, this guy. So there's going to be one of these on the back of your engine, like so, chilling. And your big flex plate is going to be bolted to this, and that flex plate is just going to be a really thin looking plate with a uh, ring gear for your starter on it. I think there's three, no, there's six bolts to hold the torque converter. Um, anyway, so once you get that separated, you pull your transmission out, you're going to need to replace that flex plate and that counterweight with a flywheel that will support a clutch so two ways to do that one find the right big giant flywheel like this right here and like that right there so this is the big giant heavy one piece deal for rotaries they're all like 20 pounds plus pretty annoying or because you had an automatic car you have this fancy counterweight right right here this guy with all these bolts well if you're lucky you can probably find they're all behind here but there's a flywheel, a universal six bolt flywheel for rotaries that will bolt up to that counterweight right there. You can just get that clutch and flywheel to fit the transmission you're going to use. Now, like I made another video, or like I said in another video, if you're going to run a stock first gen manual transmission, it's going to be a small diameter flywheel, so an NA rotary diameter flywheel. There's a difference between NA and turbo, and then turbo is the same as RX-8. We're not going to talk about FDs because they have a different whole setup. So, if you're going to run a 12A trans behind your car, you need the small diameter flywheel. Racing Beat sells, or used to, an aftermarket lightweight flywheel that bolts to that. Um, that is small diameter. I do believe, though, you will need, there's a bunch of little washers that hold the clutch on, so make sure if you buy one that whoever has it has the washers. Um, but you'll need a flywheel, basically, to, to put your transmission in. Second thing drive shaft. I know one on the FC, the automatic drive shaft is shorter and bigger. So, the because the automatic shares the same flange as the Turbo 2 transmission, or the same yoke. On a first gen, I have never owned or seen or touched an automatic transmission for a first gen. So, I cannot confirm to you what drive shaft you'll need. I do, I will say this though, you might need to find a, a manual transmission drive shaft. They're pretty common. A lot of these are manual. So, that's step two. Or you can have your one modified. But, step two, drive shaft. Get you the right one. Step three, make a transmission bracket to hold the trans up. So, I can't confirm if these are in a different spot. Like I said, I've never had one. But, on my FC when I did the manual swap, basically, <coughs> the location of this bracket was further forward on an automatic transmission so the front of the car is down here it was further forward now in order to bridge the gap you're, 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 you've got a rotary engine okay unless you're boosted and making a ton of horsepower and at that point you probably already know everything or have a manual car but you're, you have a rotary it makes a hundred horsepower two hundred horsepower probably on a good day with like a tailwind so you don't need to make the most robust, beastly transmission adapter. Literally, go to Home Depot or Tractor Supply, whatever your local store where you can get some metal. Get some two-inch angle iron, okay? Some like two-inch 
quarter inch thick angle iron, some beefy stuff, whatever you got. Drill two holes in it, or in this case, one hole. Bolt, one, bolt the one hole into the chassis really tight. Drill the other hole to fit the manual transmission thing. Bolt it together. Boom. It's held up. It's good. You're never going to break that off. You use the stock manual transmission mount. It just slides the trans mounts further back. I did that on my FC. The thing ripped. Boosted. 250 horsepower. Didn't have any issues pulling the transmission. Like being weird and stuff. So just do that. Build a custom bracket. You can make one pretty easy and cheap. Um, maybe down the road somebody will sell one. Um, but for now, nobody does. So you got to switch that. Now, getting to the parts that you interact with in the car, we're going to jump to me filming earlier. I was down by the other car that has the whole kind of dash and stuff tore out uh, to show you how to swap the pedals. What is up, guys? We're down here at the spare white car. And what are we here to show you? So, this is for those auto to manual swap people that uh, basically haven't seen under their dash yet or don't know, really know how to do the swap. So, what we've got here is the underside of an RX-7 dash. Now, you can see that the steering column, oop, might have broke that. Okay, so you can see that the steering column is disconnected. And you can look at what that connects to. So up here, your pedal assembly mounts to the car right here. These two bolts, there's gonna be a nut on the bottom. There's studs that stick down. And then, up in there, you have those four bolts that kind of go around the steering column. And, uh, and then same thing right here. All these nice shiny bolts will come out. Your whole brake and clutch pedal assembly will all come out as one, and it is attached to this. So this will have to, you have to drop the steering column and drop this panel out. Now, I know on an FC, because I did the manual swap on an FC, um... On an FC, you do not have to remove the entirety of the dash. On the first gen, we'll kind of be able to see when we get back up there, and I'll go into more detail on that car, um, what's going on. Now, the other cool thing about these cars, from the factory, it's gonna have a provision for the clutch master cylinder on the firewall. It'll be there, there'll be two bolts through it, and it'll be like bolted in and sealed, so you'll just have to pop that out, and you can mount your clutch master cylinder. So. We'll continue the rest of this up there. All right, so I retract my previous statement. We're continuing down here because I wanted to show this too. So on an RX-7, this is actually the one from my, my FC. So you can see basically right here, everything that kind of holds these in. So this is an FC one, but it's about pretty much the same. Um, but basically you've got your clutch, master cylinder stuff all pokes through these holes here. And then your brake master cylinder pokes through those holes. Those big four bolts right here, 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 and here, is what holds the booster on. So that is going to be like the big four bolts that are back in the back of this. So if you've ever done like a brake booster swap, then you know what that looks like. So now we're going to go up to the house. But, you know, i got to mow first. So catch you later this evening. Okay, so now we're back in the shop. The pedals... You can pull them out, drop the column, etc. Just, just saw that. So, swapping your clutch master, slave, master and slave cylinder. So right here, all you need, whatever transmission you got, get the right slave cylinder for it. You can make this hard line for a pretty easy, cheap, out of just some regular old brake line. Get the right fittings for the end. Get a braided clutch line here. It goes into your clutch master cylinder here. Like I said, there's a there's a plate that bolts in, so you can just put master cylinder in there. So now that you've done all that. You got the pedals in, you got your drive shaft, you got your trans in, you got everything sorted. The shifter, okay? Mazda's smart. They only make one chassis, okay? So the shifter hole is the same for an auto and a manual. The auto shifter just goes through the same hole, right? The trans mounts might be in a different place, but the auto shifter goes through the same hole. You can literally just put the manual shift boot on it, get the little rubber thing for the manual shifter, Done, did. Sealed off, ready to roll, no problems at all. And you can kind of see it in this car. You just need that metal plate there with the rubber on it instead of the metal plate that has the seal to match up with the linkages for the, uh, the auto shifter. So, it's literally as easy as that. I'll run through it one more time. Manual transmission, clutch and flywheel, drive shaft, transmission mount, uh, clutch master cylinder and slave cylinder, 
clutch pedal assembly with the small brake lever or small brake pedal and all that stuff, as you saw. Get all them things, boom, you got a manual trans. If you're buying a transmission that doesn't come with a shifter, sorry about you, but you should probably try to find a shifter for it. So to kind of show you that, um, it's back here. There you go. You just got to get the shifter thing. Um, one thing to note, um, SAs and FBs, the shifters are in a different place. So this is an SA tranny right here. Notice back of the tail, the tail shaft right here, shifter probably four inches further forward right here, okay? Don't get confused with an FB tranny, so that's an SA tranny, 78, 79, 80, an FB tranny, look right here. Okay, back of tail housing, shifter, literally in line with this. The distance, the tail housing or tail shaft length for both of those transmissions is the exact same. So, you can put an FB transmission in your SA. It'll bolt in, drive shaft works, the whole deal, but the shifter's in the wrong spot. You can do the reverse, shifter's in the wrong spot. The only difference is the shifter and gear ratios and other things on the inside, but the only difference is the shifter pretty much. So, with that, comment below if you have any questions or this is confusing to you and uh, I can help you get it lined out. It should be a fairly simple thing. Like I said, outlined all that stuff earlier. Um, the hardest part will be literally switching your pedals. That's pretty much the biggest pain. I think transmissions are easy to do on here. You can literally reach all of the belt housing bolts right here. I mean, it's super easy. Um, so, yeah. I will say this, so you will need to check and make sure that the car does not have a park safety switch. So if the car will only turn the key on and park, you will have to find, I believe there's going to be a wire, a bunch of wires go down on your automatic transmission or on the shifter to tell it what gear it's in so it will crank. You will have to jumper the wires to get it to crank over. So I would suggest looking at a wiring diagram to figure that one out. I, like I said, have never had one to be able to check it. So. Um, I can't confirm nor deny that part. But that'll be all for now. Comment below with any questions. And I also apologize. It's been forever since I've had like a regular bunch of uploads. But the mountain bike jumps are coming along fantastic. I should have plenty of content. Not like a bunch of videos, but like for one really good video about the mountain bike jumps. And then two, if you made it this far in the video, I bought a Corvette. I've been trying to get this cool video like good about it and I've been driving it around a little bit and getting some good footage but I just haven't quite got to the point where I'm ready to like upload the video yet I, I need to get a few more things lined up so thanks for watching thanks for subscribing and thank you for just being for being you and uh, keep it red